Howdy folks, it's me again. I'm still in my outfit. I'm trying to do a decent video. Um, I'm experimenting with the lighting, with the lighting a little bit. But I wanted to show more of the leather work I've been doing with some gun belts and some holsters. As I showed you before, this is my Coats Dragoon holster that the Whitneyville, the Model 1, 2, and 3 will fit in this particular holster. As you can see, I've double stitched it. I've got some Indian symbolism, Native American symbolism stamped into it. And I don't know if it picks up real well, but I hope it does. Um, I've got some British tan is the color they call it with black dye all throughout here and I've got that British tan just basically doing a border around everything but this double stitching folks that takes a lot of work and these all my holsters are what they call saddle stitch it's about the strongest stitch that you can do this is all by hand Okay, I'm having to use the hand tools to, to put in my stitch, stitching uh, uh, holes into the leather, um, a groover for the stitch seam on there, and of course it's got a pull through thong on there for the hammer. Um, it's belt mounted. It's a uh, right hand. This is for the Colts Dragoons. All right, so I think I showed you this last time too. This one here is really nice. I'm really proud of it. It's got an Indian motif concho on it with a bunch of different symbols on it. It's got a Indian Native American motif uh, with blood knots. I wanted a style that was per, uh, period correct in where somebody had been in the service and they didn't want to have that full flap for the holster, which basically covered up the whole pistol. All right, kept the rain off of it and, you know, dirt and all that. Well, I modified it doing research and made my own pattern for this walker and what they did was was they would take this which is a part of the full flap for the holster and they'd cut it down to a strap like this right here and i've got this stitched because all my holsters are lined again all my holsters are lined it will not mess up the finish of the pistols which is important to me. And here I've got a blood knot, black leather thong on there, which you insert into that strap, and you just yank her on home. And that retains the pistol into the uh, holster. It is belt, uh, belt mounted. You can put your belt through there. Copper riveted. Uh, because why? The walker weighs four and a half pounds unloaded, okay? Uh, that's a lot of weight on your belt. Uh, you don't want to walk around with a walker, <laughs> no pun intended, all day long. So there's that one. Um, let's see. Okay. Here is a belt and holster set up. Um, I believe they're triple K holster and belt for 45 lump of coat. Okay? Now I, little old me, I added the brass spots. Okay? All around and I added these Texas stars on here. It's a pretty good belt. I like it. It fits nice. It's flexible enough. It's comfortable. Um, 
I didn't make anything. I just added the brass spots to it. You know, it's got the little leg tie down here. Which, you know, just like in the old westerns. Um, I'm, I'm proud of this belt. It looks really nice. Okay, now, <clears throat> this one here has all the Indian Native American uh, symbolism uh, motifs in it, but this one here uh, has the crossed arrows. This is for a uh, Remington. It's been wet form for an 1858 Remington. Okay? Double stitched. Jock strap. Texas jock strap. Uh, shaped. Lined. And I've got copper rivets mounting the jock strap to the back part of the holster skirt. See there? That double stitching, folks, that takes a lot of time and a lot of dedication. Um, I also did the cross arrow motif there on the belt. I stitched it. All those stitches, again, I'm going to repeat myself, they're saddle stitched. They're the, about, they're the best stitching that you can do. And I hand stitched all those. And nothing is done by machine. Okay? Now, this one is styled as a Mexican loop, which was pretty common in Texas. Um, I've just got a couple of grooves going around it. Um, again, British tan with black around the edges. Okay? Following around the edges, around the edges here and there. It's lined. <clears throat> but being a Mexican loop, you make the cutouts into the skirt and you stuff the holster down through, <coughs> excuse me, the, the skirt. And that fix, that fix the holster down in there drawing it up tight. It's wet formed specifically for, um, now this one here is for my dancing brothers. Uh, it's a really unique looking pistol that was made um, in Texas during the Civil War. Um, they had limited supplies so they only made very limited number of those pistols. Uh, but this is an outfit that I did myself. Well, I've got it all twisted up now. <laughs> okay. I did this myself from a buckle and the belt loop is from Tandy. Uh, but I made I made the belt and I cut it out kind of like um, you see in some of the westerns or like with Clint Eastwood and Hang 'em High, I think, or something like that. Um, but it's after that style. Okay, next. Again, <clears throat> I made the belt and I made the holsters. Now this is done in a uh, dye that's called russet. It's a real dark, kind of chocolate brown color. Again, Mexican loop. I've got all these double grooves off in here. I've got the uh, white stitching in there, and then I've got some stamping in there going around. These these will fit most of my 44 caliber Colts. Okay. Uh, now my belt. Let's see. I got double grooving going on into the leather. I got a little leather belt loop holder there. Again, belt buckle from Tandy Leather. Um, both of these holsters are basically the same. However, if you've noticed the way this is set up, 
is I'm right-handed. So that means as I'm wearing it, I can draw the pistol out right-handed, put it back in the holster, and then do what they call a cross draw on the other holster, okay? And pull that pistol out and shoot it, okay? And basically what it is, and I'll, is they're both right hand holsters, see? But if you want to make it cross draw, you just slide that right hand holster around to, the, to this end, to the left hand side, and it makes it a cross draw. Um, I've done experiments with the uh, hammer thongs. Here, I've added a hammer thong with two tails to it, pulled through, and then stitched it so it'll have more strength to it. <clears throat> but that's my gun belt that I made in, in uh, the dye they call russet. It's a, like I said, a dark chocolate brown color. I like this red. It's plain Jane, um, but still kind of on the fancy side. Now this one, <laughs> it's a big old rig, okay? Uh, this started out with holsters from Dixie Gunworks. The belt is from Dixie Gunworks. The cartridge holder is from Dixie Gunworks, but I made modifications. Um, these were what they called, again, military full flap holsters, except that I cut them cut the full flap off and left this piece of strap left and I've got a nice little concho on there and I got a Native American motif blood knot ribbon coming off of it. This one I've got Native American stamping going around the perimeter of it and this you pull on that lift it up you got an inner flap lift that up excuse me and that holds my paper cartridges that I did myself. Okay, and I've got bullet molds for 36 caliber and 44 um, for my Walker or the Dragoons models. And so I've made I made my own cartridges, just like they had back in the Wild Wild West. Uh, they are cap and ball, so. Um, it's authentic. Here I have some conchos with a leather backing with spots on it and with a couple of eagle feathers on there. And I have them around the perimeter of the belt. Okay. Now this one fits any of my two 1859 Colts. Okay. Um, one is the Wells Fargo, and the other one, I think they call it the Baby Dragoon. Both of them 31 caliber. This big monster here, the same thing. Take, uh, take a full flap holster and uh, cut most of the flap off, which leaves just this strap here, and I put a brass spot on there so it makes it easy to identify and just pull up and then draw the pistol out. Um, I like that. And like I said, these are from uh, Dixie Gunworks. And again, I'll put a concho on here, blood knots with the Native American motif um, set up on there. And this is my cap box that holds my percussion caps for the pistols. And I've got uh, Native American Indian uh, uh, stamping going on in there. And the belt, <clears throat> you probably won't be able to see it real well, but I've got that same Native American stamping going in here and at the top, all the way around the belt. Okay? So, you know, it's, I don't know, I like it. It weighs a ton. It's got that big old double spur brass buckle on it, which looks pretty neat. Um, then, a 
again, I didn't make this set up. This is a, I'll call it a shoulder belly rig because the way it's actually clocked, it fits basically right across my belly like this. So it makes it easy to just draw the pistol out and do like that. Uh, it's it's period correct. It's I mean, but you you know, I don't really like this. I like this better, the one that I made. Okay, I made that shoulder harness, and it's got my 1851 Richard Mason, uh, uh, yeah, Richard Richard Mason's conversion cylinder and gate ring on it with the shellish tracker. Uh, again, it's got the Indian motif concho on it. Um, it's a pretty good rig. I did wet form it so it would fit uh, a Sheriff's Model 1860 Colt made by Pieta. Um, most of, uh, all of my cap and ball pistols, they were either made by Uberti or by Pieta. Okay. Um, but I also added the grooving into the leather straps here just to kind of fancy it up a little bit. And I hand rubbed it with a uh, mink oil and uh, so it would pr preserve the leather. But you notice that stitching? I don't know if you can see it. That's machine stitching. And they used really small light thread in it. My stuff that I stitch, uh, let's see. I'll show you my 1911 uh, sheets 45 ACP. Um, I just made this, finished this today. It's got the russet with the black going around the border. <coughs> Excuse me. This one, because of the Chicago screws mounting, I'm going to drill two holes in this when I get it clocked right, and I'll be able to mat, uh, mount this 1911 holster onto this shoulder rig. Okay? And so I'm making my shoulder harness to where it's able to mount any pistol that I want to. All I have to do is make the holster for it. And, this, you know, like I said before, all my holsters are lined. Um, hand rubbed uh, mink oil into it and then use that resoline to seal it up so the, the dye doesn't soak into my clothing. See? So that's pretty much... Uh, I did make a shoulder harness for my CZ83, which I will do the same thing. It's finished, but you notice the stitching, that saddle stitching. It's a lot more robust and stronger. It's got the bigger thread in it. Um, it's been wet formed to the shape of the pistol, and the same thing. I'm gonna drill two holes into it, use those Chicago screws, mount it onto my shoulder harness. So I have, instead of making, you know, five or six or 20 shoulder harnesses, I can just swap out the holsters and attach it to my one shoulder harness and use it anytime that I want. I do have my concealed carry <clears throat> and open carry license, uh, license to carry basically is what it is in the state of Texas. So I can either open carry or I can put a jacket on that covers up the shoulder harness rig and the pistol. You see how it fits close to my body pretty well. I can wear a jacket over this and conceal any of the pistols that I just mentioned. Um, so yeah, it kind of makes it handy. I don't have to do it inside the waist pants. Wish I've got some Kydex holsters that are pretty comfortable to wear like that. Um, 
I got one for my CZ83, I got one for my 1911, and I have one for my Smith & Wesson uh, 40 cal. Uh, they are comfortable, and I have a couple of belt uh, sliders outside the pants, you know, uh, that I will wear sometimes, but I, I usually, I usually conceal carry, you know, because people, oh my gosh, he's wearing a gun, oh my gosh, you know, hide your women, hide your children, uh, <laughs> it's pretty comical, it's sad, but it's pretty comical. Um, that people get so upset about a tool. It's a tool. Why do I call it a tool? Because that's what it is. A hammer, a chisel, a knife, a gun. Any of those items I just mentioned, I could protect myself with. However, I also have, according to the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms to protect myself, my property, or my loved ones, or strangers, if I choose to do so. So, you know, it is what it is, folks. You know, you have freedoms. Why don't you exercise them? Why don't you do them? You know, First Amendment, Second Amendment, Third, Fourth, all the way down. You have these constitutional rights, which are 